Doors and windows are a problem because of how thin they are. However, there are at least ways to make them less of a problem. The main thing to understand here is that whatever works for walls will also work for windows and doors. That is to say, wall construction using a mass, air, mass setup, meaning wallboard, air cavity, then wallboard again, is effective. Replicating this approach for windows means to install two separate windows for the same wall cavity with windows attached on both sides of the wall. As with walls, it is important to put as much airspace between the two windows as possible. This airspace is what makes this setup different than having a single window installed in the cavity, even if said window is double paned. And as an added benefit of using two separate windows, you will even be able to decouple the windows from one another as well if utilizing a double stud wall, or even a staggered stud wall, though this type of wall can be more problematic to design. Also, be careful not to couple the double studs of the rough window framing with window trim. Increasing the thickness of the panes of glass will be helpful, though doubling their weight, for example, will not equate to a doubling of sound isolation, because the thicker solid pane is able to simply transfer the sound's energy at a different frequency due to the fact that the glass has very little internal damping. The closest thing currently to a soundproof window would be windows which utilize laminated glass. The panes are made of two or more layers of thin glass adhered together with PVB, polyvinyl butyl, which is a very flexible plastic. The plastic has a slight damping effect on the glass similar to using damping compounds between layers of drywall. However, PVB was not created with the idea of damping in mind, so it's not that great of a damping compound. Even so, my research shows that it does help to noticeably dampen resonances. However, there is no such thing as a soundproof window, so don't pay thousands more dollars for one of these hyped up windows labeled soundproof. Though thicker window panes, such as quarter-inch panes, which are non-laminated, or monolithic, will mostly just resonate at lower frequency than thinner panes, it is still helpful, particularly at lower frequency, to utilize heavier panes. And when used in a double window installation, where one window possesses thicker glass than the other, the problems associated with high frequency resonance can be effectively negated. This can be helpful because one window is weak at frequencies which the other window is not due to the differing thickness, such as to all but eliminate the sudden drop in performance at the high frequency resonance. These alternate thicknesses are said to be most effective when one window is roughly twice the thickness of the other. One final note about windows, make sure that they are sealed up good and tight, and triple pane windows are only slightly better than double pane windows, which are only slightly better than single pane windows. The only way to significantly improve the soundproofing of a window is to add a very large air cavity between the panes, and to increase the thickness of the panes. Anything larger than a half inch, however, is nonsensical due to the fact that thickness must rise exponentially in order to continue to significantly improve the transmission loss. For example, a quarter inch pane reduces sound transmission by an extra six decibels or so over an eighth inch pane. In order to achieve an extra six decibels beyond that, you would have to double that pane to a half inch. Now as far as the air cavity is concerned, each doubling of total air cavity space equates to about three decibels reduction. It's much easier, cheaper, and sensible to achieve greater levels of transmission loss by adding several inches of space between two individual windows. Not to mention that decoupling can be employed for even more significant transmission loss. Beyond all that, make sure both windows seal airtight when closed. I'm only going to briefly talk about soundproofing doors because you basically just do the same thing that you do with windows. Install double doors with as large of an air cavity as you can create, making sure to add weather stripping and airtight thresholds on both doors, lest the sound should leak around the doors rendering your efforts useless. Neoprene weather stripping is said to be some of the best, though magnetic weather stripping works well enough if you have a metal door, of course, or perhaps a wooden door with metal strips attached to its perimeter. Again, double doors, also called communicating doors, are more effective with a double wall, not only for the extra cavity depth, but also for decoupling. Use heavy solid core doors. The only thing better than a double door is a dedicated entryway. This could be a house entry, mudroom, sunroom, etc. And finally, as is the case with soundproof windows, don't shell out a bunch of money for a soundproof door. 
All of my research points to such doors being a scam. Now, if you can't do a double door, utilize the heaviest door you can get away with. If the weight of the door by itself isn't quite good enough, you can attach a thick, heavy layer of material to it with screws. If you're using a slab door, sound damping glue can be utilized as well. It doesn't matter what type of solid material you use, whether OSB, MDF, plyboard, etc. They all have very similar sound isolating properties. The most important thing is that the door is heavy, though remember that the hinges and screws need to be taken into consideration in order that the door is well enough supported. Also, a hollow core door can be effective, but you have to construct your own since retail hollow core doors are very cheaply made. Don't expect much more out of this type of door though. I mean, if you really want a soundproof door system, just add an extension to the existing door jam if you have to, and install a second door.